sorry, no, guys, we can't use that song. We'll, we'll get done for copyright. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to think of something else. and welcome back to the Traction channel for another brand new video and not only a brand new video, a brand new series as well. I'm finally finished with Toka Race Driver 3 and the only natural thing to do after that of course is to jump straight into Race Driver Grid which was actually the next game to come from Codemasters in the Toka Race Driver series. Obviously this eventually became Grid but it's, it's the same series effectively. This was like a rebrand and this game was awesome. Now the idea is to do a similar thing with this game as I did with Toka 3 which is play through the career mode and I'm so excited to relive this again because I, I don't really remember it that much. Like I remember loving this game, playing it a lot, but I don't quite remember the actual details of the single player experience so I'm looking forward to seeing how it's structured. Uh, it is slightly different to Toka Race Driver 3. This game is slightly less serious I would say. It's more about just having fun, there's some slightly more fictional circuits and some crazy race stuff but we've also got some really really cool things in there as well so I am just so excited to play this again and I'm sure you guys are excited to see what it's like so we're gonna jump in right now. We are gonna go once again with John Traction. John Traction is continuing his career. England, that is incorrect. Sorted, confirm, there he is. And that's it, we are ready to go. Actually, before we jump in, I am gonna just make sure my settings are all correct. So I'm gonna first of all go with driving assist. I'm gonna turn everything off, make sure it's all manual. No traction control, manual transmission, no braking assist, no stability. Let's just make it uncomfortably difficult. Now, I'm going to be playing this with a wheel. Um, and this game is kind of designed, as far as I'm aware, to be played on a controller, but obviously with the option of a wheel. So even though it might be a little bit trickier with this, I'm going to give it a shot anyway, because I did talk a race driver with a wheel. And obviously, you know, this is a racing game channel. We take our things seriously. We've got lots of wheels. So I really want to give this a go um, and see what it's like. We do have force feedback options and stuff. So we're going to play around with that a little bit. It's defaulted to off. Let's not have that. Okay, we are set up to go, so I'm going to enter Grid World. And as I say, I don't really have much of a recollection of this, so uh, I'm very, very intrigued. Are we going to load straight into a race? I seem to remember there's a street race first. So I wonder if we are just literally going to load straight into that. Ooh. Yes, this is a street. We're loading straight into a race here. I'm pretty sure of it. We're going to jump straight into that Viper. Oh, the buzz, the buzz. Right, we're going straight for it. I, I turned my assists off, but I... Yeah. I've, got, I've already got an interrupting engineer, which is good. It's not Rick, but it's someone else. I need to set up my controls, which is... Somehow I managed to forget that. Okay, he's interrupted me three times already. This is a bad start. That didn't go well either. Okay, so in the options panel, you cannot set your controls. So I'm gonna have to quit out of this and we'll just, we'll, we'll just do it again. It's fine. Yes, yeah, yeah. Things I remember about this game, by the way, the crashes and flashbacks, like the damage was so ahead of its time. And I remember being so excited as a kid to actually witness the damage of a crash when it was happening and the movable objects like tire stacks, I loved it. And also this was one of the first racing games really to utilize flashbacks, which has become pretty much a staple for most racing games apart from the really hardcore sims. So yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be cool to see where it all began. Right, back into Grid World. We're gonna watch this epic intro again. And then this time we're gonna get going. It's going to be really interesting to try out the handling model again to see what it's like. I, I remember nothing of actually how it drives, so yeah, this is going to be intriguing. I'll change the camera view to the bonnet, I think. Oh, we're underway. Okay, I need to finish the race to get my rookie license, so I think the goal is just to finish. And we've got 10 competitors. Sorry. I do like the engineer's enthusiasm already. He's a little bit disruptive, but you know, we'll gloss over that. Okay, handling doesn't feel too bad so far, to be quite honest with you. Although I'm not making much progress in terms of my position. 
Right. Can we get inside this Camaro? Brake nice and late. Oh, bit of a lock-up, bit of contact. This is already, to be fair, quite a fun race. Just don't really know how to make clean moves. This is very Gran Turismo Seattle vibe up the hill. The up kind of oh, oh bit of contact. The engineer's telling me to brake early for this treacherous corner, so I'm going to listen to him. Oh, lost the back end. I've got a bit of damage as well. Oh, bit of a rude move into the lead, but we're back. That's fine. I'm going to keep it flat out. Keep it pinned all the way down the hill. I do like the way that the, the engineer's really talking me through the course, because it's my first time on this track, which, to be fair, it is. I don't remember anything about this layout. Where did he come from? Oh, he's binned it! I've binned it into him! No! No, 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 no. All of that hard work. A bit late for that. Okay, car in front of me has binned it. I love the way that the AI just make mistakes and crash. It's dramatic. Get out of the way. Nope, it's going to be P6. Well... I feel like I could have won that race. That's slightly disappointing. So there it is, P6. Charlie Taylor takes the win from Oscar. So it was another Viper. But yeah, I mean, that was a fun race. I could have won it, but, you know, these things happen. Finishing the qualifier in San Francisco has earned you a rookie license in all three regions. It's cool. a good start, but higher licenses won't come so easy, and we need them to start earning real money. You can earn higher licenses by increasing your reputation. Okay, so I can increase my reputation. Looks like we've got an American, a European, and a Japanese license, which will probably affect the cars you drive, the tracks you drive, and stuff like that. I don't really remember any of this, to be honest, but that's really nice. Hello, John. I'm your new business manager. I'll take care of the money. You take care of the driving. You this garage like isn't much, but it'll become your second home. I got a great deal on a car for you, but it's going to need some work before you can race it. We're going to need about 40,000 pounds. You'll be driving for other teams at first. Win some races for them, and you'll have enough cash to start your own team. Ah, I've so you invested can... a lot in you. Don't let me down. So you race for other teams. Uh, but you also earn money, which you can spend Driving on your own cars. Driving for teams is a great way to earn money quickly. You get a fixed amount for each race, plus bonuses for exceeding expectations. Problem is, it doesn't help increase your reputation as much as racing for your own team. Well, my business manager didn't really give me a name there, so I'm going to maybe give her uh, another episode to, to actually tell me her name, and if not, I'm just going to have to make up a name. So we've got three driver offers then. We've got Hudson Tech, which is a Chevrolet Lissetti touring car, and it's 4000 is the appearance fee. And we get a thousand pounds for finishing no lower than fifth. Then we've got Otorlando Sport in the Porsche 911 GT3. That's very, very tempting. Slightly less money for the appearance, but more money for the bonus. And then top secret Nissan 350Z, higher appearance fee, and two thousand pounds if we finish ahead of Toyo Team Hurricane. So the bottom one's definitely going to give us the most money. Ah, oh, you've also got reputation at the bottom. So is that the amount of reputation you gain? Okay. If I'm being honest, I do kind of want to drive the Porsche, so I'm going to go for this one. It's maybe, to be honest, it's probably the worst offer. It's the least amount of money and almost the least amount of reputation. But you know what? I don't care. I'm happy to do things the hard way. Okay, we're racing at Harama, and this is GT2. Oh, this is exciting. We've got car specs as well. They've got a grade. You've got top speed brakes, acceleration, cornering, and grip. So that gives us an idea of how the car is going to be performance-wise. I really like that. Harama is a circuit I do not remember whatsoever. Um, it's not on many modern sims, so it's not used that often. So this is going to be a voyage of discovery, but let's give it a go anyway. This screen allows you to set the difficulty level for each event, which will boost the reputation you can earn. Okay, so we do have some race options first. Oh, extreme one flash back and 252 rep. Oh, I feel like you can set these for each individual race just based on what she said there. So maybe I should start on something a little bit lower. Oh, we've also got pro mode where you're not able to restart. I kind of don't want to run with pro mode on simply because I want to at least try and use the flashback system. You know, even if it's only one or two flashbacks, just because it was a really innovative thing at the time and I don't want to completely miss that part of the game. So I think the best place to start, let's, let's you know, take it easy a little bit. Let's go with Savage. Two flashbacks. Okay, it's time to do the race. Cars in Le Mans series races are split into four separate classes. 
Le Mans yeah, series, nice. Okay, so we do have proper Le Mans old school, four classes. I think we're in GT2, which I think was the lowest class because this is the year when we had GT1s as well. And we've got real real drivers as well, that's cool. Oh, down the inside of the spiker. I'm down in 14th place, but I don't know if that is that 16 people in my class. Okay, handling of the Porsche is nice. Another move there. And we're up into 12th place. We've got Lawrence Tomlinson in front of us in the Panos. Esperante by the looks of it. Do you know, the circuit is actually coming back to me already. As I'm sure these things will in this game. Oh, okay, I'm third in class. That's fine. Okay, so 10th position is first in class. Oh, I remember the section of track. Oh, I've locked up as well. Get it together. That's fine. I think we only need a top three in class to get the bonus, so we're in position. Uh, the handling's not actually too bad, you know. It's, it's fine. What different camera views we've got. We've got a cockpit view. And then we've got the kind of usual chase cameras. Someone's down the inside of me. That panels has got so much straight line. So far, this difficulty level feels about right as well. Feels like I've got to work for the races, but it's not impossible. I'm only, I'm only two laps in mine, so it's probably a bit early to say anything about that. Nah, they're quite slow into the slow corners, so I think I can really make the moves in the braking zones into slow corners, which to be fair is a little bit like Torque Race Driver 3. I seem to not have much straight line speed, I don't know if that's just the Porsche, or if that's just the AI, but um, obviously time will tell. Right, coming around the last corner, we're going to enter the final lap, try and follow this battle for the lead up front. Oh, once again, I'm going to lose the position on the straight. Oh, he's squeezing me out wide. We're still side by side. I'm going to have to leave the room. Take a wide line. I've just not got the power of the panos. They're literally making contact up ahead. I'm waiting for one of them to go off. Oh. No, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Keep it together. Now, I don't want to use flashbacks unless I really have to, you know, if something dodgy happens. But we'll try and keep it as authentic as possible. I'm literally hanging on for third place at the moment. Oh, the Porsche spun off in front of me. That is cool. The engineer tells you exactly who spun out as well. That's brilliant. Around the final corner, we've got a big gap. It's going to be second in class. I'll take that. It's, it's a bit of a weird one that they don't show you the position in class. They just show you the overall position, but there you go. There's the results. P2 in class confirmed. And yeah, it's a really, really good start to this career. Now let's see what the process is after the races. We got our payment, we won our objective, and I'm rich all of a sudden. I wish real racing weren't like this. Okay, so that's going to be our European reputation, which is what I expected, and that also goes towards a global reputation, which I'm assuming just combines all three. That is all absolutely fine. And we even get a breakdown. Oh, bonuses for not using flashbacks. That is good as well. It's taken us straight back to the driver offers page, so we can uh, still go with Top Secret or Hudson Tech, so that's good to know. Um, yeah, well, this time we'll I'll tell you what we'll go we'll go with Top Secret and try and get a little bit more cash on the board. It's a pro tuned event at Yokohama Docks now. No recollection again of this. It's a Grade D car, so it should be a little bit slower than the GT2. I <laughs> will I remember the track when I see it. Who knows? But uh, you know, it should be fine. Should I try Extreme? Do you know what? I'm going to try Extreme. You must have done something right to get noticed by Top Secret. Okay, I've got to beat Toyo Team Hurricane. Let's see how that goes. I think it's Ichikawa. Interesting that they told me I must have done something right when I've only done one race. Okay, this is dangerous. We've got lorries. This is where this game differs itself from Toka Race Driver 3. It's far more about the enjoyment of racing rather than the simulation of it. That's a very rude move, but, you know, it's fine. Oh, lorry. No, don't want to hit lorry. Oh, someone spinned it as well. Hang on. It's that was Ichikawa. I'm pretty sure that's the the guy we're trying to we're trying to beat, is it not? Oh, this is fun. <laughs> Racing through the docks. Right, the fact that these AI are passing me and I'm struggling to to make any progress from eighth, that the difficulty level does change the AI difficulty as well. So we might have to sit on Savage for the first little while until I get up to speed with this game and then try Extreme again. 
There's no point coming last in every single race because we won't make much progress. Oh, someone spin. Oh, you just reversed into me. I'll blame them for that. Tell you what, let's try driving from the cockpit camera and see what that's like. Nice gold gloves. Uh, fence. Fence. Crates. Don't know where I'm going. Okay, the cockpit camera does limit your view somewhat, which is realistic, I guess. Oh, I've been passed down the inside. Nice move. Is that a Jakawa? Oh, no. That is the rival. They've spun and they've still managed to catch up and pass me. That is bad news. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, they really, really want to make this easy for me, don't they? I'm not sure if that's scripted or if it's just pure luck. Thank you, considering it was the second lap of the race. It's not really something to shout about, but okay. What should we call our new engineer? It's not Rick. Mick? He sounds like a Mick. He could be a Mick. Okay, let's try the chase cam and just see where we're at. Where is it, Chikawa? I still need to... I'm actually in sixth position, so I'm doing okay. Using the map to try and see where to go. Oh, no, that's solid. Bad. Tell you what, let's use that as our opportunity to test the flashback system. Okay, so we can use our keyboard to go back. This is... Listen to that sound. Codemasters haven't changed the sound. Even the Formula 1 games now have exactly the same sound. So when I rejoined the track, I got a little bit loose, and that then sent me into the wall. So I could go back to here and just be a bit more careful, or I could go further back and try not and get that wide in the first place. Okay, this is exactly the same as modern games. And there we go. Successful flashback. I mean, I've lost my flashback bonus, but that's fine. The thing I like about it is it does punish you for using it and encourages you not to. But at the end of the day, I would have come last if I hadn't used it. So, it, you know, it's just nice to have the option. But it's also nice that it doesn't just, you know, unfairly advantage you. Oh, close to the wall. Okay, sixth place in my first finish on Extreme Difficulty, but... I do think they were AI were a little bit too quick for the moment, so I'll maybe bang it back to Savage. That replay camera is just too intense. Like there, there's, it changes so quickly. There's just so much going on. That would just hurt my head after a while. It does look cool though. There's confirmation. Sixth position for John Traction and Top Secret. 18.4 off the win. So yeah, a lot of work to do in terms of pace. My rival was last, so they tried everything to finish behind me. Even the other Toyo Team Hurricane car finished behind me as well. So. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's one good thing for Top Secret. There we go. Payment coming through. Bonus objective completed. £5,700. And that should go towards our Japanese reputation. So, the series has begun. I am underway with Grid. Making some money, making some reputation, and hopefully it's the start of a very successful career part two for John Traction. I've got £13,750 to my name, and I need 26250 to start my proper racing career. So another couple of races and I should be able to make my own team, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, that is going to be it for the first episode of this Race Driver Grid playthrough series. I'm so, so excited to play through it. And you know what? The, the first few races, the, the handling wasn't too bad. I really did enjoy it. Obviously, it's very drifty and it's a different style, but I'm all for that. Like, you know, if a game is accessible and you can slide a car around without too much hassle, I think it's really good. So I am very much looking forward to it. I'm sure there'll be plenty of uh, twists and turns throughout this series, but... Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it, and yeah, I'm excited. I keep saying it. Just a quick reminder before I leave you, make sure you subscribe to the Traction channel, because if you do that, you're going to catch all of these episodes as they come out. If you hit the notification bell, they're going to pop up in your notification feed, and you'll see them the moment they come out, which is great. Of course, check out our website as well, www.traction.gg, for all of your latest racing game, news, reviews, updates, everything under the sun. And until I see you next time, keep it pinned, and have a great day.